Welcome to the Money Over 50 podcast, brought to you by Dallas Davison and Michael Hogue from Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. This information is general in nature and does not take into account your objectives, financial situation, or needs. Therefore, you should consider whether the information is appropriate for you and your personal circumstances. If you require personal advice, please contact Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. Here are your hosts, Dallas Davison and Michael Hogue. Welcome to Money Over 50 with Dallas and Michael. Dallas, topic today, ways to get beaten on a protest. Thanks, Michael. Horse thought, racing term, of course. <laughs> I thought uh, I thought you'd appreciate this one. So the the concept came to mind. So for anyone who doesn't follow horse racing at all, there's there's a concept here where if you if your horse wins, um, but one of the other jockeys on the other horse, basically, or, or one of the other connections of another horse, thinks that you've unfairly impeded their horse or something like that, they can lodge a protest and they basically mm. go. You know, we ran second, you know, and but we think that if if the horse that won didn't shift out and and cut us off, and you know, we would we would have beaten that horse. So, what happens is you lodge the protest, and the protest either gets dismissed or the protest gets upheld. So, if you back the horse that wins, and, and then and then there's a protest lodged, and and the protest is upheld, and you're demoted to second place. That's what they call beaten on a protest. So, mm. you you won in theory, you cheered, you carried on, you you yahooed and led up. And uh, and then you find out there's a there's a horrible noise that normally goes off when when a protest is fired in and there's like a siren and then the the announcer sort of says it and then everyone sits around chewing their fingernails waiting to see what the result of the protest is. So um, the concept I thought of here is that there's a lot of a lot of situations with your with your retirement planning where um, you can you can do things that are that appear to have have got you the result you need, but don't quite, but don't quite achieve it, or don't get you where you need to be, or mm-hmm. they you, you thought that you were there and then you're not quite. And so, I've just listed a few a few of these here, but um, so I uh, I don't know whether to give you the floor here to tell your story about getting beaten on a tro- on a protest. <laughs> I don't know how much how much time the listeners have got, but if if you're ever talking to Michael, he's got a fantastic story about. Uh, about the horse city back getting beaten at the famous Kentucky Derby, but I, I won't throw the throw the floor because I've heard the story about thirty. You've times. heard you've heard the story a lot. But and, and suffice it, to it, say, yeah. I, I, I have a real life story. <laughs> I was at the Kentucky Derby in two thousand and nineteen, uh, and I picked the winner and backed the winner, and it was protested against and upheld. <laughs> So ever since I've 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 been trying to get storytelling value out of the because uh, <laughs> I, I didn't tell it all the time I, I tell it all the time the so I get the storytelling value out of it but yeah. um but um uh yeah look I, I I like this so so basically the premise of this yeah. podcast is you think you're winning but you're not yeah. or you think you're winning but 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 yeah this yeah. is the this yeah. is this is yeah um you you. you you, you, you're not going to win. Yeah. You're not going to win because of this so, reason. So, so maybe uh, to people probably listening, going, "What is this guy banging on about?" Let's so give us some examples. So, I'll give you the first example that I had here was your super balance goes up every year, but when it comes time to retire, you don't have enough. Yep. So, th- this is what, and I think we might have talked about this before in a previous podcast. Of, I've had meetings before with people where they've sort of gone, oh, "I've got," an, or I've spoken to people, you know, in in a social setting, and they've gone, "I've got a financial advisor." I don't know. I don't really. Have, you know, we don't really have much by way of discussion. I don't. We haven't really talked about what my retirement plans are, and I don't really know whether I should be putting more in or not, or what I should do. But you know, I get the statement every year, and as long as my balance goes up, I'm happy. And mm-hmm. I understand. I understand the the premise or the impulse here, which is that you know, more money is, is more money is better than less money. So if I've got a statement that arrives and I had five hundred thousand, and then six months later the the, the half year statement turns up and I've got five hundred and thirty. I sort of go, Phew, okay, I've ticked that box. My, my retirement savings are growing. Mm. I've, I've done what I need to do, you know, on to the next thing. So that's, I think, the first one is that you, you can be watching that balance grow every year and, and going, okay, I've ticked the box every six months or every 12 months. My statement turns up. My balance has gone up. I think I've done what I need to do. Then I get to retirement and go, oh, well, hang on. I actually need to draw X amount of income and, and I need mm. that to go up with inflation every year. And and to draw that amount, I'm I'm going to run out of money in in ten years' time, and I'm not going to be able to live the retirement that I want. 
Yeah, look, and, and uh, an example that springs to mind, so often I sit down with my clients for the first time and, you know, we say, okay, well, you're on track to have, uh, yeah, about $1.3 million or $1.2 million worth of retirement savings. Um, uh, if you, if you, even if you are salary sacrificing what we'd be recommending you do, with your current investment strategy at 5% rate of return, mm. it still gets you to $1.3 million. Yeah. Um, yep. However, um, what, what that now generates as a rate of return at 5% of $1.3 million in the first year of your retirement yep. is only $55,000. No, no. And how yep. you're going to take $80,000 yep. um, uh, on average. Now, uh, we do all that salary sacrifice, put contributions in all that, and we get an 8% rate of return. Hey, that gets you to $1.6 million. The difference between 1.6 and 1.3 mm. on a spreadsheet in 10 years' time yep. doesn't appear it to be too much. much. No. But then we look at, okay, well, now, because you've been invested at an 8% rate of return, you're comfortable with volatility, you're comfortable with um, you know, being invested to give yourself the best chance of getting that return, uh, 8% on... A slightly bigger number of 1.6 million dollars. That's 128 thousand yep. dollars worth of of, uh, of, of of money that your yep. your retirement savings are earning compared yeah. to 55 thousand yep. dollars. Um, so yeah. so that's one where I think you can get beaten on a protest. Yeah, you, beaten you, on a protest. You, that, that, you're doing everything right. You've saved the money. You're maxing out your before tax contributions. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you've listened to the, religiously to the Money Out Fifty podcast, and, you, and you've mm-hmm. been doing everything right, but. All of the all of your hard work is not is not getting you where you need to be because that mm. money that's going in isn't getting invested in the appropriate way for mm. you. So, I like the way you've you've got exactly what I'm talking about here straight off the blocks because that was my that was my second point was that yeah. you're making the right contributions to super, but that money isn't being invested. Uh, it isn't working hard enough for you, and so you don't get where you need to be. Uh, another example that I had was you, you reach your your theoretical retirement savings target, but you don't have that. You don't have those savings in the right structure. So mm. your tax bill in retirement means that you, you don't get enough income. So, for example, mm. you know you want to spend sixty thousand dollars a year in today's dollars. If you're a single person, you want to spend sixty thousand today's dollars. In ten years' time, that figure is going to be eighty thousand dollars a year after inflation. So, you, you know, you again, you listen religiously to the Money Over Fifty podcast. You know that if I want eighty thousand that first year retirement, I probably need about one point six million dollars in retirement savings. So. You get to your one point six million dollars, but what you actually have is you have all of that money invested in your own name. So mm. you get the return that you need. You, you've got the you've got the retirement savings target you need. You got that money invested and working for you. You're getting the return that you need. However, you're paying twenty or thirty thousand dollars a year in income tax based on based on the income that you're getting out of that. So, in theory, you got where you needed to be. You've got enough. If you weren't if you weren't paying any tax, you would have been able to draw your eighty thousand dollars a year. But what actually happens is you're drawing your eighty thousand dollars a year. Then you have to pay twenty thousand dollars income tax. So mm-hmm. you, you've you've been once again beaten on a protest. So that was uh, a, another example. I've got another couple here. Feel free to chime in whenever you've got any. any yeah, look, one, one, while we're on the subject of tax, um, what I see uh, often times where people get beaten on a protest is. Um, that they've 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 made decisions purely based on tax. Now, don't get us wrong. Yep. We are um, all about picking up the tax dollars yep. that you um, should pick up and you need to pick up and you need to save. Yep. Um, um, what I'm referring to here is is most commonly where someone's yeah they they're in the wrong asset. They they're in a rental property, mm. and we work out that it's just not going to be. It's not going to get them where they need. It's to It's not be. going to get them to where they need to be yep. in retirement. Yep. Um, they need to sell it. Yet they're they're hamstrung by the decision of of paying capital gains tax. Yep. Um, even though it's in their best interest yeah. to do so. Or, or they and and, yeah. or, and or they're hanging on to it to to try and get those tax deductions every year. The same same concept. Mm. They don't want to sell it because they go oh, well. They want to pay income tax every year, and it's mm. it's it, that, like you say that should be a secondary thing to well you can. Mm. You can minimise all the tax that you want, but if if you are not getting to where you need to be, it, mm. it's not that's that's that shouldn't be the the target. Yeah. And and with that same vein as well, um, occasionally people come to us with with a very high concentration of of one company in particular, mm. and the same thing they've that by by 
the way that they've become highly concentrated in that one company that they're invested into is because it's it's tended to be a good performer. Mm. Um, what it's what it's what they now have is uh, an exorbitant amount of their their overall financial position tied up in one company. Yeah, and again, um, what they're reluctant to do a lot of the times is is diversify out of that company from a tax point of view. Yeah. Um, but also from a emotional point of an view. An emotional point of view. It's been a winner. It's it's got them where they it's got them close to where they need to be and so they don't want to they don't want to sell it out. Yeah. And that's one you know, when you Yeah, I think any whether it's whether it's one company or whether it's um a, a, another asset class, but I think you're right, that under diversification is, is a good example of that where you can get beaten on a protest because you you concentrate it into one one thing or one asset class or one mm. company or one whatever. It shoots the lights out for five years, and you're watching it going up, thinking, "This is great." I, I, I thought I was going to be ready to retire in ten years. If this keeps up, I'll be ready to retire in eight years. Mm. But the whole point is, because you're so concentrated, that can very easily go against you and go the other way. So you you, you got nearly where you needed to be to retire, and 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 even in retirement, if you if you tick the box and you go, "Right, oh, I've got my target that I needed," if that's all in in one one asset class or in, in one company. It's 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 a it's sort of a false economy because you go well, I think I've got a broadly diversified you know capital base to draw a rising income from in retirement but I actually have got all of my eggs in in one basket. Mm. So um, another couple that that uh, that I had um, so you've you've got a you've got your superannuation um, in, invested with with a a fund manager and they keep sending you letters and things talking about how they've They've outperformed their benchmarks, and you know you're in the top twenty percent performing funds. And you know the APRA report says this, and, and this says that, and you get this you know, great you get emails from them saying how well they're doing. What you don't realise is they're outperforming other balanced funds, and so you you've outperformed some other balanced funds, but you've still got forty percent of your of your of the money within that fund that's sitting in cash. So. Instead of getting six and a half percent, you got six point seven percent, and so you mm. think I've outperformed, I've ticked that box, I'm I'm going great, I'm doing everything I need to, when really you got six point seven instead of six point five, but you needed eight percent in order to get where you, to get to your, to your retirement savings target. So there's another way to get beaten on a protest. Yeah, look, absolutely, and and, and that's obviously specific to to um, individual situation as to what percentage rate of return they need to target. Um, for most of our clients, what we can tell you is is that they they can't generally afford to have um, low benchmarks no. when it comes to, no, to rates right. of return. In there, uh, certainly not trying to outperform the market, no. but um, but but uh, yeah, out, outperformance is not outperformance is not winning the race. Out, mm. Outperformance is is one mm. is one thing, and, and we you know we've touched on this before. It's not we don't even think it's a, a we don't think it's a worthwhile goal, but it's definitely not the most important goal. Yep. Um, and and so the the last one that I've got here is um, in, in your ways to get beaten on a protest is that you do everything right you you save you got your money in superannuation working hard for you you've been making the right contributions in you've been picking up all your tax savings along the way you've worked that money as hard as you as you as you as you needed to you, you know you you needed to get two million dollars to retire you got to your two million dollars all in. Um, account-based pensions, no tax. It's all invested and in working correctly. And then you go, I've reached retirement. I need to be invested in more stable asset class, so I'm going to move all that money into cash. Mm. And that's that's I think the last one I could think of. Of you've done everything right. You've 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 essentially won the race. But what you've done is is you've made uh, the wrong decision at the wrong time, which is that you've approached your retirement as as a as a as a as the winning post, and that's where I needed to get to and get to be in front, mm. rather than approaching it as my retirement is a thirty-year time frame that I need to, mm. I need to keep working my money relatively hard, to to provide the income that I need to draw that income for that that thirty-year retirement. It's it's not enough just to get to that target, and then pat myself on the back. I need to make sure that that my money is going to last mm. me, and I'm not going to run out. Good little topic today, Dallas. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the Money Over 50 podcast with Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. We look forward to catching up again soon.